was kind of debating on whether or not I wanted to make another one of these, because I, I really don't know if I have that much to say about the the, the, the rest of the specials. You know, I talked, I talked a bit about special one, the Star Beast, and basically all I had to say about it was that it was fine overall, um, a little preachy um, in terms of, like, its messaging and uh, there was a lot of messaging that didn't tie into the the narrative it was just kind of like pushed <laughs> on top of everything and it was just like awkwardly written some really kind of cringy dialogue i just wasn't like crazy about it um and i j it just didn't like wow me i guess in the in in the way that i wanted it to um i definitely felt like the the star beast felt almost scarily to me like more of the same more of like 13th doctor era which not not a fan of i don't know if i've like expressed you know um i i i've been watching doctor who since the you know since the reboot first started airing my dad was uh apparently had watched some doctor who in college and so when the reboot was coming out he uh he was sitting down watching it and i just you know when i was a teenager and like whatever whenever that was like 2003 or something um i don't even think i was a teenager well i would have been probably like 10 <laughs> i was like young um i you know i sat down and i watched it with him um and it just became like a, a family show that we all watched together my sister ended up joining and we would all sit down and watch doctor who every every week so um, it's, it's, it's pretty special show to me. I feel like I kind of grew up with it. Um, and what, what else is there to say? I, you know, I, I, I still liked it into the Peter Capaldi era when a lot of the people that I knew that watched it kind of dropped off. Um, you know, and I, I think there's a lot of reasons for that. I think for one, it's just a completely different vibe. You know, I, I knew a, a lot of the, uh, sort of, uh, a lot of the people I knew to be fans were girls, you know, that kind of thought the, the, the dorky smart guy with the time travel box that solves everybody's problems and, you know, whisks pretty girls away to, to, on adventures through time and space. That was a very appealing thing to women. I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why. Um, cause, you know, he's, he was a pretty boy, you know? At least when we had Tenth Doctor and when you had even Matt Smith. Uh, I was kind of mean to say it that way, but... <laughs> I always thought Matt Smith was kind of weird looking, but, uh, you know, a lot of girls will are into that. You know, it doesn't really matter, I guess. Bl you know, blind looks. I'm gonna stop being mean. <laughs> it's, it's too much. Let me, let me dial it back a little bit. Um... Honestly, a lot of the people I knew got, you know, I'm an American, obviously, so the Doctor Who didn't really have much, if any, uh, large-scale appeal in the U.S. Um, I do, like, my, like I said, my dad watched it in college, and I, 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 I'm not sure, I think he was probably just watching, like, um, Seventh Doctor era, like Sylvester McCoy, or he was watching, like, reruns of, you know, third and third three to eight probably third doctor to eighth doctor i'd imagine um because those are the ones where there's no like big lost episodes missing um and those are all the ones that are in color um yeah so but yeah it didn't have a large scale appeal until i believe the matt smith era and there was something about the matt smith era that was very different it was very like fairy tale storybook sort of thing i knew a, lo a lot of people that liked the david tennant era um but it wasn't nearly as many as as like you know doctor who really blew up with a matt smith era for some reason um maybe it's because it was kind of soft rebooted uh, a little bit and it was very whimsical it became very whimsical um and very cool there was there's a lot of really cool moments of him just like facing off an alien and them just like running away because he's like I'm the doctor. There's a lot of, like, gravitas to just his being who he is, which is kind of cool, and there's not really 
a good, um, <laughs> I don't think there's any other shows that really, like, match that sort of character that just has this crazy history, um, that can make it, that, make that sort of situation a believable one. Um, you know, that he, he can just turn people away, even though he's not very threatening on, on his face. Um, you know, it's just kind of cool. Um, some people hate that about the Matt Smith era, <laughs> how they turn to the Doctor into sort of this, the most important man in the universe. Um, but I, I liked the Peter Capaldi era. The Peter Capaldi era is still great. Um, kind of underrated, but like, like I said, uh, a lot of people dropped off, and I just think it's just because the, the vibe of the Doctor completely changed. Now he's kind of like your older, you know, professor, uh silver fox professor like some some people are into that but you know um it wasn't nearly as much as you know pretty young early 20s guy <laughs> um british man you know uh but capaldi's episodes are great and i i, I still follow those um uh, I think it kind of dipped a little bit in in some of the later seasons um some of the episodes weren't weren't as enticing um i don't think uh like i don't think i was crazy about bill as a companion honestly <laughs> probably like one of uh, i hate to say it one of my least favorite companions i just didn't much care for her so you know i liked i liked a lot of the other ones um i, I don't think there was a companion i really like hated um but bill i was like eh, whatever <laughs> sure bring her along i guess um, but their dynamic was good. Anyways, I'm kind of rambling. I'm off on a ramble here. Um, but 13th Doctor era was just really rough. Um, the stories just didn't... The, the messaging was really, like, surface level. It was always just, like, thing bad. And there wasn't any, like, exploration of, of a concept or, like, you know, ph philosophy to it. You know, let's explore why thing is bad. You know, um, it, it just became very boring and <laughs> bland to watch, um, and I just didn't care. I just didn't care at all. Um, the Doctor, like, the 13th Doctor, I felt like didn't have much in the way of personality except to just be, move really fast and talk a lot and just be really s smart and clever, and... She just didn't... Like, the other Doctors at least have some sort of, um... You know, some some sort of flaw. They, they carry around this, like, pain with them of, of you know, locking their their people in the uh, in a time bubble, in, in the time war. You know, 9 and 10. It, 9 had a lot of, uh, anger. I feel like 10 had a lot of guilt, but he also had a lot of anger. Uh, I feel like 11 was kind of trying, you know, pushing past it, but still carrying a lot of, like, grief and kind of burying it more so. Um, and 13 is just, like, mm, <laughs> I don't know, she's just all over the place. She just didn't have anything that, that kind of kept her grounded. It was just like, oh, she's she's just the person that comes in and solves the problem. Which is a very shallow way to look at Doctor Who. It's not. It's not really how that, how it is. He's not. He's not perfect. He's just smart and clever, and he can think his way out of situations. You know. There's also an element to the companions. Usually, having the companions along, they usually help. You know, he usually brings along people that are like good to bring along. You know, people that are smart, people that can uh, think for themselves and solve problems on their own. Um, he's very good at judging character. Um, but the, the, the three companions, I mean, they weren't very well developed. They were just kind of... There, there's, there's, a, there's a video especially that I thought was pretty good, I think, by Jay Exe, um, The Fall of Doctor Who, 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 who kind of covered, I think, my thoughts pretty thoroughly. More so, I'm not going <laughs> to claim that... Well, anyways, I thought he covered it pretty pretty well. The, the, the characters kind of just, like, re, they, they just reiterate what's happening and just say, oh my gosh, there's a spaceship. Oh, oh, no, aliens. 
you know, but they just don't, they don't have personality. They're just there to, like, say, they're, to, uh, what's the word? Expose? <laughs> exposition? They're just there to spout exposition and, and like, nothing else. They don't add much to the plot, you know. Yaz had, like, Yaz was a cop, so there should have been some moral quandaries there between her sense of justice and, like, whatever was going on. Um, her ability to handle herself in difficult situations should have come up, it didn't. Um, you had Ryan, who has, like, a fear... He had, like, a fear of small space... Was it small space? He had some sort of weird fear. I don't remember what it was exactly, but that came up, like, a total of twice. Other than that, Ryan didn't do anything. There was Graham, who was probably the the best he was just funny you know he's just a funny guy there to sort of crack jokes and just sort of he was funny i don't know what else i liked him out of all of them i liked him but i honestly felt like the 13th doctor era was just there to kind of it almost felt like he was chris chipnall was trying to sort of return doctor who to like the first doctor era i always felt that way because the first Doctor era is kind of like slow moving and a lot of them are like historicals where the Doctor and his companions are sort of just thrust into a, a, a historical situation and somewhat irrelevant to what's going on, they just have to escape. Like they get separated from the TARDIS and they just have to get back to the TARDIS so they can leave. Um, you know, they just get embroiled in some sort of situation but don't really influence it all that much. It just happens as it happens. It kind of felt like a lot of the 13th Doctor era was, was kind of like that. For example, I think the um, Demons of the Punjab was a big a big example of that that really reminded me of, like, that era. And then they kind of just throw, like, aliens in there. But it they don't really do anything. You know, the Doctor is her companions. They don't really do anything in that episode. Um, they just witness everything that's going on. You know, the Rosa Parks episode just kind of had this extra space racist villain. I'm only going to talk about the first season because I kind of like I watched the rest of it but I barely remember a lot of the rest of it like season 2 and 3 Flux was just a mess like Flux didn't even make sense the Flux season was just like confusing because it didn't It there was no logic to it but I've completely like removed it from my brain so i have i barely remember anything except like the dog there's like a dog alien guy um and there's like a a, a part where they leave yaz back in time oh there was that other companion guy who they kind of like they did like a weird thing at the end of an episode where they like showed the actor's name like introducing this guy as the new companion and he barely did anything I don't even remember if he was in that many episodes. Dude was, like, just a, a big nothing burger, you know? I think it was there, but I don't even remember it. it what, <laughs> which episodes, what he was doing. I don't remember him doing a damn thing. At least Yaz started to do more stuff, you know? But, like, yeah, it was just... Yeah, it sucked. <laughs> just wasn't good. I just didn't care. I was just watching it just because... I don't know. Sometimes I like to watch things that just aren't... E I, I can just kind of look at it and be like, oh, this, is, this sucks. And I kind of kind of enjoy that it sucks a little bit. Um, so that's I kind of found some enjoyment in that. Yeah, I, di I didn't like the twist, the timeless child thing. It sucked. Anyways, I'm, I'm talking too much about the 13th Doctor era when I meant to talk about the specials. So I'm just trying to say, okay... I was kind of excited we're returning back to, like, a, a, a very long time ago, but one of my favorite, you know, things in television was was David Tennant, Tenth Doctor era, but I would say only mainly <clears throat> a big part of that was just that Christopher Eccleston only had one season, um, so it, it quickly became that David Tennant kind of, you kind of associate him more with, like, building up you know, Doctor Who. Whereas Christopher Eccleston, he got it started, but one season, man. He was good, but one season, that's all you got of him. And then you got three seasons of David Tennant. And you got a wealth of amazing episodes. So, 
you know, it's easy to associate him more so with, like, the, the kind of golden era of the reboot. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, Matt Smith after that. And I liked Matt Smith, but he did have some bad episodes. We, you know, we, can, we, can, we can say that. Um, I suppose so. David Tennant probably. I can't remember any bad episodes in the 10th Doctor era, but he probably had some. I don't know. Anyways, it, yeah, it's exciting to, to have them come back. They also brought back Russell T. Davis. Uh, I learned from watching a bunch of videos about... Um, I did watch a lot of reviews of the Star Child, people watching the Star Child. Just because I was really interested in what people thought of it. Because I thought it was okay, but I was like... I was like, man... Like, are people going to acknowledge how cringy that those like some of this stuff is like I, I don't know if people are gonna acknowledge it they're gonna completely ignore it and they're just gonna rave about how great the episode was because they, they're obligated to <laughs> like oh david Tennant came back i can't i can't say it wasn't that good some of them were some of the reviews were really funny to watch because it was like it was like there were a couple where it was like they were trying to approach the topic of like well i want to complain about this but actually i mean it wasn't that I didn't like this, but... And then they, you know, they were just desperately trying to be like, actually, the episode was 10 out of 10, but maybe this could have been better. So they could appeal to those people that were, you know, maybe not completely 100% on board with this, <laughs> I guess. Um, it was it was funny to watch. I, and less people complained about that than I thought would. Um, and the people that did complain, some of them were fair like maybe a couple but there was there's some they were just like they're just like channels that build themselves off of just like <clears throat> ripping into like s social justice stuff in in television shows you know that's like all they do is just like go way overboard and complaining like ah oh, this is the and the, the downfall of western society <laughs> you know it's like it's not that big a deal it's a stupid British sci-fi television show, you know. It's it's not that big a deal if they crash and burn it into the ground with their, you know, just bad writing. Like you can do you can do stuff like that. You just have to write it well, and you you can't just can't just be this surface level thing. That's just like, aren't we so great for like saying thing? You know, it's like, no, I, I, I get it, but, like, I'm, <laughs> I, I, my, you're not giving my brain anything to think about, you know, <laughs> you're just, you're just telling me what to think, and I, it's just like, oh, cool, <laughs> sure, I mean, whatever, um, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, a, a, lot, a large assortment of people talking about Doctor Who, but, those channels, insane. A lot of them are really insane. I can't, I can't watch them. It's just because of how over the top they are. And I guess it will get, we'll, we'll start talking about Wild Blue Yonder now, um, which was a, I liked that episode, but I will say in comparison to the first episode, that's probably why I liked it. Cause I was like, first episode kind of sucks. Second episode, oh, this is good. It's like an actual, you know, sci-fi episode that's not just trying to like you know <clears throat> be too preachy you know it's it's just like here's the moral of here, here's the moral that we're tangling with and uh here's this here's the monsters here's the situation what's going on miss big mystery we land on a ship and there's nobody on the ship except this robot that's moving really slowly and then eventually they meet like these sort of doppelganger versions of themselves, which is really well done. I really liked how they how they did the um, how they did that scene because you have the Doctor in one room and Donna in the other room, and then um, well you have they're in the same room and then the Doctor goes to a different room, and then you we stay on Donna and then it's just the Doctor coming back as if he just he finished what he was doing. Um, and then she's just, he just, like, is sitting in the background, and she's just, like, talking to him while she's doing her thing. 
and then they stick on that for a while and then they they go back over to the doctor in a different room and then donna walks into that room and you're like oh that she's in the background you're like oh those aren't those aren't them those are like different versions i thought that was a really cool thing and then they did this uh the cgi body it, my it, my arms are too long <laughs> and then, their arms are too long and that's how they you know it it was pretty it was pretty good i i liked it i i had a good time watching it um would i say it was incredible would i say it's amazing would i say i'm gonna remember this episode from for years to come probably not i liked kind of the cosmic horror of it but beyond that um, you know, they're like on the edge of the universe and they're like, everything's unpredictable. You know, we don't know these creatures. They, they don't fit into the laws of physics. I'm like, that's cool. Um, they're trying to like <clears throat> make their way into the universe. I did think it was interesting. He wanted to like kind of keep them from doing that. And he's like, we have to like, uh, he blew them up on the ship. I'm like, is that a doctor thing to do? Would, would the doctor really like, like these are you know, thinking creatures. They're alive. I'm like, I feel like the doctor would, wouldn't, wouldn't kill them. He would be like, he would try to like contain them or put them somewhere where they can't hurt anybody. But he's not generally the type to like, I don't know. I, I feel like murder a sentient species unless it's really, really like a threat to creation, <laughs> you know, a threat to everything that exists. Um, then it's like, if he doesn't have a choice, that's what he's got to do. So, I was a little, like, questioning on that point. Um, but, uh, Wild Blue Yonder, I think, is where there, there, there were people, like, again, I watched a lot of videos about, about that one, and I, I thought it was funny, people trying, you know, the same people that complained about, um, you know, Starbees complaining about Wild Blue Yonder, though, this is, this is the downfall of Doctor Who. And I'm like, this, this episode was better. I mean, it, like, I, I was trying to find, like, thinking in my brain, I'm like, what what do those channels have to complain about? And then it turned out they complained about um, the the first, there's a scene where Isaac Newton, um, they land in the tree above Isaac Newton and the apple falls, whatever. Um, it's kind of a weird scene. But they complained that Isaac Newton... Uh, he was race swapped for one and then there was also like this offhand comment that the doctor was like he, he he's kind of handsome isn't he and Adana's like yeah <laughs> so, I don't know that's what happened I guess I can't even remember if it was her that brought it she might have brought it up and been like oh he's so handsome and he's like oh I know um but yeah, they were complaining about the race swapping, which is like whatever. Who I, I don't. Th that's not that big a deal at at at, th at this stage. I mean, I just don't. I don't feel like I, I care that much. You know, I don't feel like it's that big a, a deal. I don't feel like I feel like it really means anything in the end. It's just, <laughs> it's just. You see the character as Isaac Newton, and that's that's who he is. I don't think the race really matters, honestly. But you know, maybe I'm. I've, <laughs> there's probably there is a time where I probably would have like complained about that, you know. Sometimes it's just unnecessary, but I, I guess why I don't care is just because it's like a a very minor character. Like it's he barely it pops up at all, and it's like it just doesn't care. Like if it's a significant character, and you're you're doing like a weird change like that for some unnecessary reason, then I would care. But, like, who cares? That scene is just, like, a comedy scene just for to start start off the episode. It doesn't have anything to do with anything, <laughs> you know? I'm, like, I even forgot about that scene. Like, I didn't, even, I didn't even think of that in my mind, and that's what people latched onto about the episode, and they didn't talk about anything else. Who cares about everything else? They race-swapped Isaac Newton <laughs> for, like, the first five-minute scene. They also, then people were complaining that they implied the Doctor was gay, or that the 14th Doctor was gay, which I, f I feel like that's, you're, first of all, stretching the, you know, dialogue there to sort of suit that specific narrative. Like, that's it's kind of a stretch to go that far, 
from him making a comment and acknowledging that, like, yeah, he's handsome. Like, as, as, as a dude, like, you can say other dudes, like, I can sit here and be like, hey, you know, uh, Chris Hemsworth is, he's a really handsome, you know, well-built, muscular, beautiful guy with long flowing locks, you know, and a strong jaw. And I can say that, um, and it's like, you know, <laughs> it doesn't make somebody like gay to just acknowledge that, you know, um, it's just weird to like take it there. Uh, I didn't do that at all when I was watching the episode and I was surprised that people did. Um, but even then, like, I, f I feel like in my brain, the doctor has always been kind of somewhat asexual but also somewhat like i feel like there have been moments where he's leaned on the bisexual side or at least maybe pansexual i don't even know what pansexual means but he's kind of attracted to he, he doesn't have like a play for a specific bat for a specific team you, you know i feel like that's never been a thing i feel like he didn't he flirt with with jack jack harkness like way back in the ninth, 10th Doctor eras. Like, I feel like that happened. And maybe I'm just, like, making that up in my mind, but I feel like that happened. Um, and I feel like it was kind of acknowledged that the, that the, the Doctor is not really just a straight guy. So it was weird for uh, uh, for me to hear a lot of people being like, oh, he's, he's definitely been straight this whole time. I was like, has he? I mean, he doesn't even really ever really dated anybody. I don't even think he's... I mean, he has. We go all the way back to, like, the classic era. I have watched through... I'm trying to watch all of it. But I've watched, like, First Doctor era. And I, even in the Aztecs, there's, like, this lady that he... He, like, has a romantic fling with in the Aztecs, which is, like, the third serial. Um, <laughs> so it, it, like, happens. Um, not super often. Um, but especially in the reboot, they kind of don't go that far into, like, really, like, tying the knot with, with another character, but there's been implied romance, specifically, oh, well, there was with, um, with, um, River, River Song, obviously, Doctor's Wife, that did happen, they do kiss, um, so that happened, and there was also, like, an implied romance with Rose, which I think was also acknowledged, I think it was acknowledged in the third special. Like, they, they mentioned that that was one of, like, River Song was one of the people he was in love with, and, oh, you were also in love with Rose. That came up at some point. I don't remember exactly when, but it did happen. Um, <clears throat> which, totally, I totally believe that. That was, like, a big thing that, you know, a big shipping thing back in the day. A big fangirls, fangirls loved the Doctor and Rose. That was... A beautiful a match made in heaven so I understand it but anyways that's like f the first five minutes of the episode who cares you can just forget all that you know like why why even complain about that I don't understand <laughs> I don't I, yeah, it's just funny to me how many people like latched onto that as like this episode's just as bad because of that <laughs> Like, well, the rest of the episode was fine. The rest of the episode was good. I, I enjoyed it. I th I had a good time watching it. It felt weird and quirky and space-timey and fun. Anyways, special two. Uh, special three, I would say, was my favorite of the bunch. I really liked uh, uh, Neil Patrick Harris. They bring in this um, to play the Toy Maker, who is a very, very old Doctor Who villain that they have tried to bring back, but never actually did. Um, also has some, like, racially, supposedly racially insensitive stuff about him. I, I read some stuff about that that apparently, like, because he was originally called the Celestial Toymaker, and apparently Celestial was kind of, like, an offensive term to, like, Chinese people, and he was wore, like, Chinese garb. And so <laughs> they just call him the Toymaker in this. Um... Instead of the well, they, 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 there is like an offhand remark where he 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 says he calls him like celestial or whatever. You're the toy maker, but celestial. He says the word celestial at one point in in reference to the toy maker. Okay, 
but um it was good it was fun i i liked i liked it a lot honestly um i thought oh they they i forgot they bought wilford mott back just for the ending of episode two and then they kind of had to write him off for um episode three really where he just kind of disappears and he you don't even actually see him in the episode and the reason for that apparently was i mean it, it was because he passed away the actor passed away and they didn't get a chance to film the rest of you know his scenes for special three so they had to just kind of like push him out of the episode but they have kept the character is still alive they acknowledge oh he's he's out shooting at, at the end of the episode they, they they say he's out shooting ducks um but he wasn't at all in special three which would have been on the, I, I mean obviously there's nothing they can do about that but you know um we we got to see him in episode two so that's fine um but yeah again I, I liked how they go into like more cosmic horror sort of like having this villain that is just defies the laws of physics um and it just doesn't care uh it doesn't doesn't really have to <laughs> play by the rules he plays by his own rules really he's the toy maker so he plays games and the doctor just challenges him to games i do feel like I kind of wanted more of him, more of him in the episode, you know? Um, like, they they go to this weird place where they have to go through the, these different doors, and they all lead to the same place, and then they see him do the stage show where he explains all of the Doctor's, like, history since Donna um, and all of, all of the stuff that had happened, which is really actually quite quite cool to watch and like <laughs> have the doctor have to kind of like acknowledge all of this and donna have to like watch all of this happen it was cool but i don't feel like there was much payoff to it honestly it would have been nice to have some like payoff they bring back um mel who i believe is the one of the seventh doctor's companions and she's just there she doesn't really do anything she's just there she works for unit she's just there um it's cool. I like cameos. They're cool, but like you know, even in the Thirteenth Doctor um, era, one that I think it was the last special, wasn't it? Where she, you know, they had um, Ace and um, who I forget, <laughs> I forget the other girl's name, but they 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 were they were involved in the plot at least. They were doing stuff, you know, they were doing all sorts of stuff. Like that was hate to say it but that was kind of a cooler cameo um that was better it was better more well done um but yeah they, he teams up with unit and i did i did like that scene you know i did like him just sort of walking into into unit and he, he gives a hug to uh stewart I, I forget her full name it's something like bridge bridge him stewart let lethbridge i freaking don't know man every time i hear it <laughs> um he gives her a hug uh they walk in you know and he just starts kind of throwing orders around and you know doing the 10th doctor th routine where he just kind of like just con instantly walks into a room and, and and is in charge of everybody you know <laughs> like that's cool that's what i like about the doctor you know is is that specific quality of just kind of being able to just instantly take control and have everybody on board with his authority you know it's just a really cool trait that's his most notable trait i feel like um it's cool it's cool to have that um they do have a scene where neil patrick harris as the toy maker he comes in he does this song and dance routine um which was goofy and fun and i honestly i heard some people complaining about that uh, I thought it was goofy and fun. I didn't really have a problem with it. I thought it was I thought it was a good time. Uh, you know, there's a part where he like zaps uh, some two dudes into like balloons, and they're just dead. <laughs> he just kills them, and they're like sh shooting at him, and it's doing nothing. And he's just like, there's just a song. It did remind me of maybe a little bit too much of um, 13th Doctor era, the Master. Um, where I feel like there was the, the, it reminded me a lot of the Ra Ra Rasputin song and dance thing that he did that was just kind of weird and, and quirky and strange. Um, it was a lot like that, which I feel like is, is kind of just this weird humorous th thing of just like throwing like a musical number in 
as like comedy and like it was good because I, I think I liked this character more. I don't know. It works just because of the cos. I like the cosmic stuff. I like the cosmic horror. I like having just a guy that's just. I don't know. Just <laughs> nobody can do anything about him. You know, he just does whatever he wants. He walks into the room. I just thought it was cool. I just liked the the villain. I liked that the concept as a villain. Um. So, I don't know. It was okay. Maybe it goes on a little bit too long. That's the problem with the musical number thing is it just goes on a little too long. And then you're just like, all right, wrap it up, you know. <laughs> like, you could have done this as, like, a one-off joke. And now we got to listen to the whole song, you know. But it was it was fine. Um, and then at the end, uh, they play a game of catch. That's how they decide to end end this whole thing, which, again fine <laughs> oh but then they did okay so this is the big thing i guess i have to talk about is the is the whole um by regeneration i suppose is what they called it um which sort of the big spoiler of special three is that um david Tennant, 14th doctor gets shot through with a laser and i was like you know in my head i was like i knew this was gonna happen i didn't know actually how many specials they were gonna do I thought they were gonna do a bunch. <laughs> I had no idea. I didn't. I didn't even pay attention to like how many. Um, but you know, you knew he was gonna like. They already announced the new Doctor, so we already know who it was, and I already knew who it, who it was. So I was like, okay, well, they do have to like. That's that kind of sucks that they kind of have to do this sh really short run of Fourteenth Doctor becoming David Tennant again, and he's. I'm like, that's gonna be so tragic for his character, who's like. You know, death is is honest. Honestly, the tenth Doctor's passing, I feel like, is one of the most tragic, just because of how little time he really got. You know, that he was he was just like, you know, his death was inevitable. And he knew it was coming, um, and he was just, he was he was too early for him. He didn't like it. You know, you know, he was like, I, I could do so much more. You know. At the at the end, he, and you know, he has to just kind of give up, and he gives his life to save Wilfred, you know. Um, and I was like thinking, Fourteenth Doctor, like they're gonna kill him off, like, and it, it, he's gonna have even less of a chance to just be fourteen, you know, be the Fourteenth Doctor. Um, which is not. Uh, they, from what I saw, they were they were like, no, this is like he's he's not ten, he's like fourteen, he's like a different guy. Like I'm, I, David Tennant in an interview said he was like playing him differently. Um, so that's so. You know whatever. Um, but yeah, that was he was like barely given a chance to like really figure out like what what the whole deal was with that. <laughs> it was, I felt like you know just killing him off right now is just gonna kind of be a little bit like. I don't know. I'm gonna, you know, take taking the wind out from under, under my sails. You know, I'm trying to, like, what was even the point of that? <laughs> what was even the point of this? Did we, do we have a point to to make of the 14th Doctor's existence really, except to just like, kind of nostalgia bait everybody? Um, and I feel like no, mostly it was just to nostalgia bait everybody. Um, but they do this by regeneration, which they like split into into a two they the new guy splits off from david Tennant, 14th doctor um to be the 15th doctor but so they dis, so they both exist now and they're also able to use the leftover power of the toy maker to split the tardis into two um and i thought just thought like why <laughs> why did we why do that I'm like, what was the point of that? Like, I'm on one hand, I'm like, okay, it's kind of satisfying to know that, like, David Tennant Doctor is still around. I'm like, okay, that makes me feel like my my you know child self that lives inside me is still like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. It's like Tenth Doctor never died, and they brought him back, you know, and now he's just gonna exist forever now because he's just 
living out in the countryside with Donna Noble. I'm like, that's kind of cool. But at the same time, I'm like, but why? Because it feels to me like they are going to, like in the new upcoming seasons, they're going to move on with 15th Doctor. He's going to be the central star and we're going to cover his adventures. It seems like David Tennant, 14th Doctor, is just going to kind of chill and like stop adventuring. And that's the whole point is they're like, oh, he finally got the the ending that he always deserved. I, I find it weird to like reconcile, like, am I supposed to feel good for like 10, the ending of 10, like 10 is now like happy and living off his, his life all great and happy. Because in my mind, like the doctor is the doc, like all of these people that play the doctor are the doctor. Like, it's not like I'm thinking in my head, like, oh, 10 never got to, to, you know, his, his happy ending. I'm like, well, no, he, he, he's still going. He's the same guy. You know, he became 11, he became 12, he became 13, and then he became 14. It's like, it's the same dude. Like, at any point, any one of those doctors could have retired to the countryside and gotten their happy ending. Like, he didn't have to return to David Tennant to do that. So it's like, it, it, in my mind, it doesn't, you don't, you're not, like, justifying. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm struggling to kind of explain what I, what I mean here. Like, I feel like Ten's happy ending is just the Doctor's happy ending. You know, it's just it's just that. But then they're also like, no, but then there's another Doctor that does isn't having that happy ending and is still going on. I'm like, I don't even get it, man. <laughs> I'm like just confused. Like, how am I supposed to think about this? This is the same guy with the same memories. But then there's also this guy over here who's relaxing. But you got this guy who's not. And you got this guy who is. And it's like, so... Which, which one, which, like, which one <laughs> am I supposed to be, like, like, I, I feel like they want me to, it's like, oh, you can have your cake and eat it too, you know, you can have both, you get both. The doctor gets to finally have his, his good ending where he settles down and has a family and just no longer is running from this enormous weight of guilt on his mind. And then you also have, oh, but the, the other doctor just kind of throws that all into, like, like David, that's David Tennant's doctor, and he, I'm a new guy. I don't have any of that. I'm just a new guy, but I do have all the memories of, of there. It doesn't even make sense, you know? Like, if you have all the memories, then you do have the weight of the guilt. It's, you have the same thing. You have the same, like, dark stuff weighing on you. And you you had, like, the 15th doctor kind of, like, you know, uh, what's the best way to put this? Kind of patronize, being a little bit patronizing, you know? Just like, being like, hey man, you just have to let all that go. You're, you, It's all over now. And it's like, who are you, man? <laughs> like, you're him. You're the same guy. What are you telling him to be like, to get over it? What? <laughs> like, are you, did you just get over it? I'm honestly like, I don't know if I... I, I honestly don't feel like I have a lot of respect for just being able to be like, oh, let's put that, let's put all that, that in a box, you know? I'm like, that's better. That's a better way to be, is just be like, oh, just let it go. Just let it go, man. Who cares, bro? Just, <laughs> just relax, bro. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I was going to say, you know, I don't, I, he seems all right. He seems like an all right dude. Um, I, I, you know, we'll, we'll see new series. I, he gets a Christmas special, so we'll see him in the Christmas special. I'm just hoping for good things at this point. I thought this three part special was all right. Mostly it was all right. Was it amazing? Uh, no, but it, it made me somewhat happy for a good portion of it, I guess. Um, but I remain cautiously optimistic about the future here. We'll see. Um, this is the first uh, Black Doctor, I guess. So they're doing that. And I, I, you know, I was, I was, I did say before, like the whole race swapping thing, I don't, I don't care. And with a character like this, obviously you can, you can change these details. It really doesn't matter. Um, but from a, you know, show running standpoint, from a writing standpoint, 
when you do this sort of thing, you have to do it for the right reasons. You can't just be like, oh, look what, look what I did. I changed the doctor's race. Like, everybody pat me on the back because I did that. You know, like, oh, wow. You have to, like, I don't know if you, like, I would say you necessarily have to have a reason behind it. Like, you have to have, like, you can explore that. Like, they didn't even explore in the 13th Doctor era when they turned the Doctor into a woman for the first time. They didn't explore anything about that. It had no relevance to anything. And is that better? I'm sure some people would be like, oh, it's, yeah, it's better that we, we don't, like, acknowledge it as some sort of difference but it is a difference i mean and there there would like i feel like there's something to explore about that and they just don't even really acknowledge it except when we got to the 14th doctor era and they were, they were just like man i hate i hate you now that you're a man now it's that sucks you're so much worse of a person for being a male <laughs> that's the only the only acknowledgement we're gonna get about that being relevant to anything so I don't know if the racial thing like there's plenty of stuff they can do with to to like push that into the story. I don't know if they will if it'll have any relevance on any sort of plot line because you know in the past they have kind of like f for example what I'm trying to say is I guess if you have a doctor and you you know go let's go back in time. You know, you can see a lot of issues that might arise from like weird racial tensions throughout history you know there's stuff to explore there i don't know if they would do it though because um you know they they have historically in this show they kind of just race swap history all the time you know they don't really <laughs> acknowledge any of that um unless it's specifically what the plot's about like the rosa parks episode you know Anyways, um, what I'm trying to say is that if you're going to, like, it's fine to do it. Just don't put the cart before the horse, you know? Like, I, I feel like what should come first and foremost is definitely, like, the writing, the story. Like, the story you want to tell is a thing that should matter most. And it does worry me when, like, the first thought you have is, oh, I just want to change the doctors. I just want to change this, like, racial or, or gender aspect of the character. Like... I hope you have more ideas than just that. That's that's what I'm trying to say. You know, <laughs> please have more ideas than that, <laughs> um, because I am not. I'm not gonna sit here and applaud you for doing that. I really don't care uh, that you did that. I it doesn't matter to me. Um, that's I don't know. That's that's it. So I'll I'll keep watching. I don't know if I'll make more videos about this because it it does feel weird. Uh in terms of like the content i i normally produce um and i i don't know i honestly sometimes think about doing more like little reviews of stuff but i don't know if it's a particular strength of mine so that's why i i've kind of just stuck with like let's do let's plays for now just kind of like try to make those as good as i can um then anyways if you like this if you sat through this, this is almost an hour long uh i applaud you thank you for sitting through this if you um uh if you liked it leave a like leave a subscribe if you specifically like and comment on this video and be like oh please make more of these then i will make more of these specifically um so i i'm saying that because i feel like if you subscribe because of this video i might not necessarily make more unless like people actually you know express to me that they like this specific thing and this is what they want to see more of you know that's that's all 